got another Twitter follower question, and I, I recognize this guy as well. Um, it's from at Andre G N Rice. I don't know how to say that, but I like the guy. Uh, right now, there is a considerable difference in graphics between consoles and PCs. Do you expect a huge leap in graphics for the next generation? Um, huge is a tough one. I think you'll get up to the PC graphical standard at the time the consoles launch or close. Obviously, PCs will keep going. Um, we're hearing a lot of rumors about the chipsets going into the various consoles. And, you know, it's really interesting to me whether you're going to see Intel chipsets or AMD chipsets, whether NVIDIA is going to participate. Um, what I do know is that all those companies are pushing really hard to make graphics better and better and better. So yes, I do expect that the consoles will be powered to run a much higher graphics standard. I'm not sure games are going to have it. Um, I think actually there's some complicated stuff going on now because if we decide to make games 3D, as you know, 3D technology is alternating frames. So that cuts your frame rate in half. So even if we go to, let's say, 120 frames a second, it's going to be 60 per eye at the same time, the alternating. So I'm not sure you're gonna see that much better graphics than you see in the current 60, uh, 60 frame if you go 3D. But the answer is, yeah, of course we're gonna see it. Um, I think that it's a trade-off for the manufacturers because they don't wanna make the standards so high that games cost twice as much to make as they do now. And so they're gonna to have to kind of balance that. And I think the publishers are gonna to have to really make a decision, how much are we willing to spend? Because as I answered in another question, if break-even on a game is 100 million in sales, you can't double the cost and suddenly have 150 or 200 million to break even. Uh, that'll mean even fewer choices for consumers. So I'm okay if graphic standards don't improve that far or that fast, but I think the next generation consoles will allow them to if uh, somebody wants to. This week's next question comes from RPG Maniac 92. Hey, Pack. Uh, Microsoft make it so hard to delete a debit credit card off one's 360 console. Many people think all you have to do is go online to xbox.com, but really, you have to call them and jump through more hoops. Also, how is this practice legal, making it so complicated, complicated to cancel the card? All right, I have to confess, I've never tried to do it. So I'm gonna take you at your word. Um, I think you should look at your credit card. There's something on the credit card that's called an expiration date. So first of all, if you do nothing, it's gonna expire, so who cares? And second, if you're not going to charge on it, who cares? So the answer to your question is, why would you ever want to go in there and cancel a card? I know you can add a card, because I've done it. So I know you can add a different card, and I have done that. I've never tried to delete an old card. I think on Amazon, I have about eight or 10 cards, and probably six of them have expired. And I do it because I have one in my wife's name and one in my name, because I actually like to know when she's buying versus when I'm buying. Go figure. Um, but in terms of making it hard, uh, I don't think they intended to make it hard. I think that they assume that most people don't care. If you're not gonna charge, don't use it. And if you wanna not use that card anymore, then it'll expire within typically two years. Um, and so your question, how is this practice legal? Making it complicated to cancel a card. It's not legal. I mean, I'm sorry, it's not illegal. You can call your credit card company and you can say, I don't want to use this card anymore, please cancel it. And it's literally that complicated and they will stop allowing any charges on the card. So again, I'm not exactly sure what you're doing with Microsoft. I mean, is there some kind of recurring charge that's going on? You know, is it your Xbox Live account? Because again, pretty easy to turn that off too. I don't know. I think that uh, this is a typical question where you're making a lot more out of something than is really there. Um, we have a lot better things to do with our time than worry about whether a card is sitting out on Xbox Live. Uh, I get it, you know, if you're worried about a PlayStation Network hacking kind of thing and you don't want your card information captured, I get that. But uh, asking, you know, you to make a phone call to verify that it's really you canceling it, I don't think that they're asking that much. And yes, it's legal. Next Twitter question comes from at JJ Ryan on air. Can a company ever take on Gamefly with faster shipping times and higher inventory since Netflix backed out? You know, I think that Gamefly is an interesting company. I think they do a nice job with rental. Um, they, last time I saw a public document out of them, they had about 500,000 subscribers. You know, I think that might be up to a million. 
but you know that tells you compared to Netflix is 25 million. You know, that kind of tells you that there's not as many people who want to sign up for a rental service. And the real reason I think is the average price on GameFly is over $20, like 20 or 21 dollars. Um, that's a lot to commit to, you know, a subscription for games. $240 a year if it's 20 bucks a month. That buys you four brand new games, and if you trade games in. That buys you about eight brand new games if you if you really are playing that many games and then swapping them back in quickly. Um, so you've really got to be the kind of person who likes to play 20, 30 games a year. Now, if you have if money doesn't matter to you, if you have you know obviously more money than time, you sign up for GameFly and you try everything, and that's actually a smart way to buy games too. For the cost of four games, you can try a hundred, and you you know so essentially you can get two games a week, and you can figure out which ones you want to buy, and then you buy the ones you want to buy. Um, but I think that that appeals to a small number of consumers, like I said, probably a million. So the real question is, is there enough of a market for somebody to want to compete with Gamefly? They have a huge competitive advantage, they're, they're way ahead of everybody with these half a million plus subscribers. Um, they are very efficient, um, as I understand it, they get games to people within two days. And I think most people don't decide on Tuesday, oh god, I want to play that game tomorrow. I'm a Gamefly customer, so I'm going to put it online today and it'll show up in the mailbox tomorrow. You can plan ahead. You know when games are coming out. You have a queue just like you do in Netflix. So I don't really think faster shipping makes much difference. Higher inventory, I think Gamefly has a better advantage because they have so much revenue coming in from those half million subscribers that they can afford to invest in more inventory. So I think the answer is no. Nobody's going to compete. I don't think people will try. And I think it's, gonna, it's very costly to, to come up to where they are right now. All right, fellow babies, if you have a question for me, please submit them at the link below or directly to me on Twitter at Michael Pactor. If you follow me, I will answer them directly. If you don't follow me, I won't answer them. And if you have a question for the show, at Michael Pactor on Twitter and copy at Rohan Likes Pants because Rohan picks all the questions.